this year uh, with RamFam and Fanatically Caress. I am your co-host, Anthony Ramirez from RamFam Collectibles. With me today, I have Chris. Go ahead, Chris, if you want to introduce yourself. You know it, Omega with Fanatically Correct. Check out the Fanatically Correct podcast, as well as what we spun this off of, uh, Comics Collectibles and Cafecito. Uh, you can check that on the RamFam YouTube channel, Fanatically Correct. We have all the audio from that as well with our podcast on any of your audio platforms. You can get it, Spotify, Apple AirPods, and that. Just look up Fanatically Correct. And, of course, RamFam, go to the YouTube channel. You're the Comics Collectibles and Cafecitos. And these videos right here of Small Sips. And today, uh, for this episode uh, of Small Sips, we are joined by Axel. Axel, let them know who you are and what you do and uh, what you got. Hi, my name is Axel, well, well known as Golosaru. Uh, I run this uh, page on Instagram, again, Golosaru. Um, I'm a toy collector by heart. Uh, I'm currently doing a lot of, well, I, I started as a toy photographer, then everything just kind of like um, became a, a, a I became a content creator after after you know being a toy photographer. So now I do a lot of toy reviews, unboxings, and whatnot related to anime figures and other um, um, you know six inch scale uh, action figures like Marvel Legends or um, yeah Marvel Legends or Mafex or anything anything that is entirely anything that is around figures. There you go. <laughs> nice. But, but you have. I- a bigger fan of the Dragon Ball uh, franchise, but you, uh, like you just said, you also do Marvel stuff and, of course, superhero things and other anime. But I guess that's your favorite is Dragon Ball franchise. Dragon Ball, yeah, actually, that that's the, that's my main foundation, and most of the fandom that that uh, that I have, they they follow anything related to Dragon Ball or any other anime, uh, trendy anime like Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen. And you know uh, other animals that you know it, it would take me forever to mention them all, <laughs> but <mostly laughs> so, Dragon Ball. So this will tell me everything I need to know about you because you and I work a lot together, Axel. But I never asked this question, so this is a good one. What is the absolute best saga in Dragon Ball history? And I'm talking about Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Super Kai, all this other stuff afterwards. Which one's your your most favorite go to saga? <clears throat> Jeez, that's a that's a hard one. But I would say Dragon Ball, the original one. That's how it started. That's how everything started. Um, I, I've been, I, you know, on another podcast, I told the story that actually my dad was the one who uh, introduced me to Dragon Ball in Mexico because oh. I wasn't watching any anime at the time. And for some reason, he he watched Dragon Ball one day. And he's like, hey, you know. Let's check it out. Let's watch it together. You know, something oh. that usually doesn't happen. And uh, yeah. again, uh, my relationship with my dad was kind of rough. But again, those 30 minutes with him watching Dragon Ball were like the most awesome time I had with him. Plus, you know, Dragon Ball itself, going through yeah. all the series with uh, Kid Goku and going through the Red Ribbon Army, uh, Dra- doing the tournaments, all the stuff. Yeah. But that you mentioned that, and that's kind of something that's pointed out a lot. Dragon Ball that is a great father son uh, bonding uh, anime, even from the beginning before Goku himself is an adult and has a child with Gohan. But just all the father figures, a lot of Master Roshi is like a father figure, and um, there's a lot Piccolo. of Piccolo with exact well, Piccolo's, Piccolo's more father figure. Yep, than <laughs> Goku is. in all of Dragon Ball. But from the Dragon Ball series, we know that he's the main villain. But then Vegeta ends up being a uh, um, not the best dad, but a loving dad. Um, exactly. When, it, when push came to shove, he actually did care about his son Trunks. Even the version of him he never met, you know, the older one that yeah. when he knew he was a son, he, he cared for him. And um, it's pretty amazing. So that that is, I've never actually personally looked at it that way, other than the, the particular joke of Piccolo being Gohan's real dad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all the way through all the series, it is, that's a quite um, a bonding uh, anime. I, I mean, I know back in the, in the 80s, like the Flash series, the original one, not the one that was recent. Um, mm-hmm. But that was kind of one of those shows, too. Smallville was another one of the live action, but much earlier than that, especially Dragon Ball, because Dragon Ball is like early 90s, the original one. So, yeah. yeah. Earlier, on the same time yeah. as Sailor Moon, all that came out. So, yeah, that's that's uh, that's essential, man. And that's that's nice that that's, you know, you were able yeah. to have with uh, with your father. Yeah, and Dragon and Dragon Ball, you know, like when, when it hit the... We hit when it hit Mexico. It was like, you know, early '90s. I, I don't know, man, 1993, 1994 ish. I would say, 
and that was a huge like a boom like actually it was it was dragon ball it was sailor moon like you said it was uh, senseiya and it was uh, other three animes that were not as good as drag like the main ones were sailor moon dragon ball and senseiya in mexico yeah. Yeah. but dragon senseiya ball is the one fire that, fire that, that captured me the most and a lot of people kind of like no i mean dragon ball was in the 80s yeah yeah it was it was created in the 80s but and it took yeah. some time to get to the you know to to latin america in and yeah. in general i mean it took what like late 90s to actually get to the us yeah yeah it just curious cuz you i'm sure you've seen some of the the, the english ones in it for the us um i've never watched it but did like the mexican ones did they try to sound like one another or is the vegeta and in, in, in the mexico's version completely sound different from the vegeta and the the american version no they, they they do sound completely different yeah I mean, they do i mean they have the same vibe you know he's very you know yeah. rough As well. um, antagonistic sometimes and yeah. you know very selfish at, at some point in dragon ball z <laughs> but he becomes a better person yeah but and then they they were able to capture that in 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 the voice uh in the spanish you know in the spanish uh uh translation yeah i think I, it's I'm, really it's really interesting to have that connection like chris said um I tried that. I have three kids of my own. I have six now, but three from my family, three from my wife's. And all three of them, when they were younger, I was like, you guys are going to learn about Goku. And we got up to the tournament where he was taking off all of this stuff to fight Tien. Uh -huh. and, you know, he's got his weighted suit. And he's and everyone's like, yo, this guy's been wearing that this entire time. Like, this entire yeah. tournament. Like, <laughs> And they all really appreciate it. And then eventually, you know, Fortnite came out, all the different things that yeah. they branched off. But it, it's a good, um, it's, it's, I think there's a lot of like good things behind it that like you can pull from it. Like, yo, you know, sometimes you gotta, you, Goku was always doing the right thing in general. Vegeta mm -hmm. was always very prideful. So it's like you could take just a small piece of that pride and apply it to yourself, but you don't have to like, you know, go on a murderous rampage or yeah. anything. I, I, I tell I tell some I tell some people that, you know, when you're a kid, you identify more with Goku. And then as you become <laughs> older, you identify more with Vegeta. Vegeta, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Piccolo was kind of the in between. Yeah. Piccolo, he was like yeah. the balance. Stands and desires to be like Goku and do the right thing. But then he'll have Vegeta moments and be like, Yeah, you know what? This is probably the best way to handle this. Just be done with it. Kind of like the Superman yeah. Batman dynamic as well, you know, the you know, right. ones were willing to take it a little further. They don't not so much Punisher, Daredevil. I mean, there's a lot of that duality um, in a lot of our favorite comic books and animes and stuff like that uh, growing up. Uh, and the other thing was we had to commit. You know, that's the thing. These kids now, you get to throw it on stream for them. We had to. Oh, you can watch them. everything in a month. Yeah, we had to the day of the week and what time it came on. I guess for you, when you were watching with your dad, was it Saturday mornings? Was it Friday? No, afternoon? actually, uh, for Dragon Boy, it was um... evenings. Evenings every every day from Monday to Friday. Oh wow! At Seven p.m. That's oh, why. That's, that's why we. Oh have, yeah, because uh, they probably already been released. Yeah, they've already been. Yeah, released. they were. They were. I mean, they were. Um, what happened is in Mexico, they they released them like that. It was not like once a week type of mm -hmm. thing. It was like yeah. every, every you know from Monday to Friday, but then they run out of episodes that that were translated, and they run it back all the way. Oh, nice. So you end up okay. in a nice cliffhanger. And you, the next day, you're expecting, you know, like finally, there's gonna be this, back to the this conclusion, <laughs> and it starts all over again, all over again. That's a, that's a that's a that's a story that every every uh, I re I would say every Mexican that watched Dragon Ball will tell you, like yeah. Yeah. the 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 fact that they were like just stuck in a nice cliffhanger. And then they couldn't watch it because they had, you know, they repeat the whole series again because they run out of. Um, uh, episodes. That's wild. So funny. I can't imagine trying to watch Goku fight Frieza on Planet Namek, and then because that their fight is like the five minutes that Frieza threw that bomb, mm -hmm. whatever energy ball, into Planet Namek. That was like fourteen episodes long. So I can't <laughs> imagine getting to like episode thirteen and it being like. You know what's yeah. going on here, like, like, and then it starts all over. <laughs> yeah, actually, it happens, but it happened um, all the way up to Ginyu Force. Like once the Ginyu Force was done, and it's like, oh man, like the next one is gonna be Frieza. Like boom, we have to watch it all the way from Reddit. Start over. <laughs> all over. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
It yes. happened a couple of times. Like I said, I, I get, you know, I get flashbacks and then we're wow. <laughs> You do big uh, and great work with the unboxing um, and the videos and the shots. And I see behind you all the open box figures. That's a curiosity thing. Oh, when you do the unboxing stuff, are you getting more than one of that particular figure, keeping some perfectly sealed in the box? <clears throat> or do you unbox everything? Uh, I do get at least two figures. Okay. One to open and one to keep it on the box uh, really? just in case. Uh, and that's something that is very unhealthy in my part. <laughs> I, I would say with the oh, prices what? going it's... up, I mean, yeah. I, would, yeah. I would do it with Marvel Legends, you know, I, would buy, I just I used to buy two because, you know, I, I, I like them, how, you know, so I like them and I just like, you know, they're two, they're 20 bucks. They're what, it, back in the day they were like 18 bucks. Now they're yeah. like $26. So I'm like, nah, that's I don't do it with that with Marvel. But what I do doubles is with the premium Bandai um, figures, the, the ones that are limited run, because, you know, once they are out of stock, they're out of stock. Yeah. So be able to find them at a retail because, price, it's going to be really stuff, hard. Like that whole, like, like unboxing is almost like, like collector's porn, because <laughs> you're, it's, like, it's, it's, it's like naughty, you know what I mean? Because certain collectors, you know, you're doing it for the investment, and the investment, obviously, it's going to have its most value never taken out of the package but a lot of us especially those in our age group and in our liking and the things that we grew up watching stuff like that we want to display it and can't display the box it's not the same so right. it's like i always ask that for you guys especially because it's also an investment in the other end that you guys sell them uh, and trade them as well so it's, like, it's just funny because it gets it, it's like almost like a naughty thing like i'm taking out the box the thing i'm not supposed to do because as kids you want it out of the box you can play with it you know as right. adults yeah. i mean Maybe we're playing with it, you know, with it. <laughs> no one's watching, but outside of that, we're not it's to display it. But, you know, then that's the whole thing with the unboxing videos. Like, and, you, and you film it slow-mo and from different angles, you know, it's hilarious. But that's the whole thing. It's like, it like almost, I can buy that, watch your unboxing video, and like, okay, I don't have to open mine. Now I know what it looks like completely. I experience I, that. And experience that <laughs> yeah. vicariously without having to damage my product. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean... Uh, I mean, I did well. I didn't think it that way, but thank you. Like, I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, like the unboxing thing came out of um, once uh, uh, Instagram made uh, the reels more popular because they were losing the battle with TikTok, so they decided to to, to do more video, uh, quick content. I would say quick video content, and I, you know, photography was uh, was not their priority at the time. When, when, and that actually pushed me to learn how to do video, how to like video instead of photography. And then, you know, it went from like doing fun, funny skits or like funny like stuff with, with the figures to finally yeah. just say, you know what, I might just do unboxings because people might not wanna, oh, wow. might not see my, my, my comedy funny. They might just do, what is this guy doing yeah. playing with toys? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A robot so just, uh, <laughs> Robot chicken. That that's all they do is these action figures. At the T V show. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. All they do. Yeah, they, and, 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 then, shit. and then it became more like, all right, let's do just unboxings, focus on actually the product, see the figure, how it looks like, the things that you could do. So, you know, you have back then I have thirty minute thirty seconds of, of time and it seems very little. But then, you know, you practice and then thirty minutes seem thirty seconds seem to be a lot now. For you know, because yeah. yeah. attention span is very short these days with with you know everyone, <laughs> uh, and yeah. thirty seconds is enough to show the the, the, the figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, with that's that, pretty interesting. Yeah, with go that. Ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Anthony had touched on uh, before we recorded uh, earlier, and I'll let him get into that about when you started. Um, and I guess that's probably a time when everybody had a lot of extra time in their hands, especially in the beginning. Um, I'll let you ask that, Anthony, so you can get into yeah. that. Yeah, well, I was, I was nosy, and I had time on my hand. I started scrolling down, all the way down through 960 posts, and I found your very first one. It was a golden um, ape form of whomever, I'm not sure, uh, Dragon Ball Z character, and you mentioned, hey, this is my favorite one. And I looked at the date, and it was essentially April of 2020. So yeah. in the cusp of this COVID pandemic stuff, it seems like, this is where things just started for you. So did it come from like an act of boredom of like, hey, I'm stuck inside now by whatever regulations and here I am? Or pretty much. Is it, 
something different? Pretty much, it started like that because um, I was working from home. I, you know, I, I already had a good collection of figures, mostly statues. I wasn't into SHP arts uh, at that time or Marvel Legends. I was more into statues. So, uh, I, like I said, Dragon Ball original has uh, was my my thing, but but Dragon Ball GT has the other side of my heart too. Yeah. Like, so the goal it's was. So yeah, dragon and people hate like people dislike me for that. Like, dude, that oh. thing was awful. Blah blah blah. Like, I don't know. Like, there's some good stuff there. I'm a, I'm a GT fan. <laughs> I'm a GT yeah. fan. and I know that they retconned it out and stuff like that. But it's you know it's still something watchable. It's a good series. It has relatable characters. Uh, shameless plug. Uh, and uh, Anthony Ram fans will be part of that. And maybe you can get some of your figures out there. The voice of Pan will be with us at Sunrise Comic Con. Uh, in the Broward County area, Saturday, March 2nd, uh, and then she'll most likely be doing New Era um, that Sunday, March 3rd. So, um, just oh, wow. going out. Yeah, we got a lot of Dragon Ball Z we characters. We just had to. Stephanie. And she does other stuff, too. Just go on <laughs> stuff recently, too. We got a yeah. ton down here, dude. Dang. Oh, good that. Like, like, so many that like, Chris was like, hey, have you went to go see her? I was like, nah, I'll catch her next time. Like, like <laughs> they're just like, sometimes a revolving door. Like, I've probably met Stephanie, like, six times in the last yeah. two years and it's not yeah. like a bad thing or not to her but we get a lot of traffic with conventions down here and so we're right. very fortunate yeah which is a very right. awesome, you know it's a good opportunity for the collectors and, and, and things like that for you to get an extra thing on your figures and stuff like that get that autographed you know get that that's easy to get separate or separate separated from just the standard you know purchase figure it has a little bit more yeah. uh it'd be cool to get the mexican voices that would be <laughs> that would be wild that, that'd, that'd be, be wild. Wild. yeah, yeah okay that would be super cool. Uh, something we always ask too, uh, and this way we don't we don't go too long over time, yeah. is um, what is either it's your most prized possession or like just the hardest thing it was to get. Like just to you, what was the one figure or or you know collectible that was like the big wow, like like the thing that you'll probably never sell, uh, that you know is either too hard to get or just Close something to your heart. About. Oh man, I there's a lot to choose from. I would say that the go the, the the go ape, that's actually something that it's it's one of my biggest statues in my collection, and it's just very imposing. And I really would would I don't think I would get rid of it at all. That's nice. actually how big is it? I didn't know the statue. How big is that? Uh, well. Here, let me see. I'll show you something here. Really. Careful, please. Yeah, don't break it on video with us. I don't want to be responsible for that. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, it's I'll about, send it's me about, the bill. I don't know, man. It's about 16 inches. Yeah, I'm showing you a knock, uh, 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 a knockoff, though. Whoa. This is a, this is this is uh this is the Vegeta one. But the yeah, one, yeah. one, it's it's a little bit taller because his hands are going like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's almost the size of my wow. face. We're close. So the it's got to be 16 inches or more. Yeah. yeah. This is this is a knockoff, though. I, 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 I've been searching for the original one. And this one, yeah. I think, is going for like $600, $400 original. Wow. So and someone that, unreal. that one didn't come in a box. That was like 3D printed or something like that? No, no, no. It's, um, it's, uh, it's soft plastic. Oh. Ah. So. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, that the other one, the Golo Star one, it's 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 real, soft yeah. plastic as well. Oh, it's actually from the same line, Ichiban Kuji figures. Wow, soft vinyl. They call oh, yeah, it. I see those the distribution. Yeah, the detail. That's no, that's wild. Unreal. Yeah, and Vegeta is always the best, especially in his eighth form. I, yeah. I think. I'm I think Krillin really should have cut off his tail a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I have that one. Fight, and I knew about the tail problem. Yeah, I have that one, and I have the SH3 guards. Nice. nice. But yeah, that, nice. the SH figures was like $200, I think. So uh, in, this is small sets, so we do keep these in short format. So we're almost at 20 minutes, but I want to spend the last minute or so. Uh, actually, I want you to be able to plug yourself. Uh, where can they find you? What's your handles? You know, share the stuff so that they have it here. So that we want to share it on Instagram. They know exactly where to go. Okay. Well, you can find me on Instagram as golosaru. Go.osaru with double O. And then you can find me on YouTube as Golosaro, you know, the whole thing complete. And TikTok, Golosaro as well. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. Well, when I share this, I'll be sure to tag you as a collaborator too, so that everyone can easily find it. 
uh, and I'll add it to the descriptions. But it's awesome to have you here in our small sips. I look forward to our working relationship. I know you and I are going to be working a lot for the next year. Uh, for those of you that don't know, you can see a lot of brand fan collectibles, videos unboxed exclusively with Axel uh, on his Instagram, on his YouTube, on his TikTok, and any other platforms that pop up between now and then. So thank you so much, Axel. Also, congratulations. Axel is a new father. Hopefully uh, your son and your wife are doing very well. Everyone's doing happy and healthy. And maybe we'll see a spinoff eventually of your son doing his own unboxings of figures in the future. <laughs> so thank yeah, you so much. in the future. <laughs> yeah. So okay. thank you so much, everybody. Appreciate it. Be sure to catch us. Uh, small Sips with Ramfam and Fanatically Correct here on Instagram, on YouTube, on TikTok, wherever you watch this. And check out our podcast, uh, Comics Collectibles and Capacitos, uh, on Instagram. And make sure you give Axel here a, a, a big follow, a big like. He's got a ton of great content. Be sure to check it all out. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Got more coming. Later. Thank you, everybody. Oh.